Here are your video notes for Lesson 7.4, which will be about writing and graphing exponential growth functions. And I believe the best way to teach you is to make a comparison of exponential functions, which will be review for you, to exponential functions, which will be what's new for you. And if we take a look at what equations look like for linear, most of them were in the form of y equals mx plus b. Equations for exponential equations will be y equals a times b to the x power. An example of this would be y equals 3x plus 2. An example of an exponential equation would be y equals 2 times 3 to the x power. Another way to write it linearly would be to reverse how the or the order of the terms in it, which would be y equals 2 plus 3x. And if we take a look at making a table of such an equation, we'll be able to see the difference between linear and exponential. First, the value of b in the, is the y-intercept, which should be thought of as the initial value. In our equation, we have the y-intercept of 2, which the initial value will appear here, which is next to 0, because the initial value should be at the starting point of 0. Second, we would look at the value of m in the equation, which is the slope, and that should be thought of as your constant rate of change. Here the slope, or the uh, constant rate of change should be 3, meaning that if the x values are increasing by 1, our y values should increase by 3, giving us the next point in our table should be 5. And if we look, the x values continue to increase by 1, we can have our y values continue to increase by 3, and we will get 8, 11, and 14. You may notice we have a blank area of our table up there for the negative numbers. The easiest way to get that filled in is to realize going backwards in our table, we are actually subtracting 3 to get the value before it. So if we do 2 minus 3, we'll find out the missing value there should be negative 1. If we subtract 3 again, we will get negative 4. And we have our linear table done. Now to complete our exponential table. Remember, linear was review, so pay attention now because exponential is new. The value of a is the y-intercept, and in our case, the y-intercept here is 2, and that should be thought of still as the initial value. So we're going to put the 2 in for y when x is 0. Then the value of b is the growth factor, which is the amount that you will multiply the previous value by to get the next value in an exponential one. Here the growth factor is 3, so as long as our x values are increasing by 1, we are going to multiply our y values by 3. 2 times 3 gives us 6. To get the next values, as long as we see our x's are still increasing by 1, we can just repeatedly multiply by 3. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3 is 54, and 54 times 3 is 62. And once again, we will notice that in our table, we still have a couple of blank things to fill in for the negative values of x. Well, working backwards in our table, we are actually dividing by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So from this 2, we are going to divide by 3 to get back here, and get 2 divided by 3 will give us 2 thirds. If we divide this by 3, it would be the same thing as multiplying by 1 third, which will give us 2 ninths. So now we have our tables completed, and if we want to take a look in summary of what was it we saw here, let's take a look at the four, the bottom row of the linear table. How did we get this 14? Let's remember that we started with an initial value of 2, and we repeatedly added 3. Repeated addition looks like this, but you should know repeated addition actually is written shorter. Instead of adding 3 4 times, we can actually add 3 times 4. The 4 being the x value that gets substituted into our equation up here that then get allows us to do this calculation to get the 14. So what you should take away from this is an understanding that a linear relationship in a table shows up as repeated addition. And in the equation, it shows up as multiplication. If we take a look now at how did we get this 162 in the table here for exponential, we did once again start with an initial value, which is 2, and from there we multiplied by 3 four times. 
which written out the long way would look like that, but we should know a short way to write repeatedly multiplying by 3 four times would be to write it as 3 to the fourth power. The 4 being the value of x that gets substituted into our equation up here that allows us to do the calculation down here to get the 162. So what you should be seeing in an exponential relationship in, the ta in a table will show up as repeated multiplication and in the equation it shows up as a variable exponent. Thanks and you should have your notes completed at this point. We will see you tomorrow.